The U.S. Open is underway, and day one has some big names playing their opening matches during Monday's evening session. Some matches already have gone on, so let's preview those matches coming up on the evening session. We're going to do that with a former pro tennis player and journalist for NBC Sports, Julia Albaba. Julia, good to see you again. We just did this a couple of days ago where we previewed the whole tournament. I'm glad we get to talk again. How are you doing? Thank you for having me, Dexter. It's always a pleasure to be here. I'm doing great because I'm at the U.S. Open, the best tennis tournament of the year for all fans. So all is well here in New York. All is well, as you can see, Julia, right there at the USTA Tennis Center in Queens. And Julia, before we get to opening night, I know you were closely following the first day session of the tournament. What caught your eye thus far on Monday afternoon? What did you see that you really stood out to you this on Monday afternoon thus far? The first thing that stood out to me is that it's August 28th and it's really comfortable temperature wise. I mean, it's mid 70s. Fans are actually enjoying the weather. Usually right now, Dex, we're miserable. It's usually 90s, humid. The weather is perfect. But overall, there's this sadness that Serena Williams isn't here and that she's not coming back. You know, since she made her U.S. Open debut in 1998, we haven't had her, you know, for a few years during that stretch, but now we know we're not having her back. Someone even said this is the worst U.S. Open of all time. It's just sad because she's not here. But other than that, Maria Sakari, she's a number eight seed. She fell first round to a girl ranked number 71. So that's already a shock. Iga Sviantek, the number one seed. She cruised to the second round. No surprise there. And Victoria Azarenko also cruised the second round. Other than that, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. You see Sakari with the upset there. Disappointing loss for her. And Sviantek, yeah, she cruised through that first match. Did that in under an hour. That was pretty impressive right there. Julia, when we talk about the evening session for the first day, let's start with Coco Goff because we spoke about her the other day when we previewed the tournament. She opens up against Laura Siegmund. You told me that you believe Goff has what it takes to win her first U.S. Open. So what do you want to see from her in this opening match that would show you exactly that? So as you said, she plays Siegmund of Germany, who is a veteran. She's 35 years old, so almost double Coco's age. That just, it speaks on how talented Coco Goff is. I expect since Siegmund went through qualifying, she has some matches under her belt. I do expect her to maybe come out a little sharper than Goff uh, as a veteran, as someone who has been able to shake off that rust. But it'll be really cool to see if Poco can be locked in right away, if she's moving those feet, if you're seeing early match nerves, if just she should be more confident now that she's been playing miraculously over the last few weeks. But I think more than anything, just seeing her temperament will be more important than how she's playing game wise. Yeah, you want to see if that confidence translates for her from her recent play in the last couple of weeks over to here in the U.S. Open. On the men's side tonight, another heavy hitter. We got Novak Djokovic, the number two seed in this tournament. He goes up against Aleandre Mueller. Djokovic has won 43 of his past 46 sets against players not named Carlos Alcaraz. Considering his recent form, do you expect him to dominate in this opener? This should be pure dominance from Djokovic. He's making his 17th U.S. Open appearance, and he's playing an opponent who has never played the main draw of a U.S. Open, let alone on Arthur Ashe Stadium, where everyone is going to be cheering for Djokovic. This should be a straight three-set match in under two hours, in my opinion. Djokovic is 16-0 and in first-round matches at the U.S. Open, so very straightforward, quick night for Djokovic. Should be straightforward, quick night. Should be a safe bet that he improves to 17 and 0 there. And lastly, I want to ask you about Stefano Tsitsipas. He lost in the first round of last year's Open, but we saw him reach the finals in Australia. He's been a bit inconsistent this year. Opens up against Milos Raonic. Is Tsitsipas a player that you can see making a run at this year's Open? Yeah, as you said, he's so up and down. He's either hot and goes through deep, or he falls first or second round. He's number seven seed here. I don't see him winning the whole tournament. I can see him, you know, going a few matches in. Surprisingly, one of his toughest matches of the tournament is the first round right now against the Canadian. He used to be number three in the world. So this first match here will be very telling. 
based on whether it's a win or a score, how deep Titi Pass can get through into the U.S. Open. Yeah, Titi Pass has been up and down. We'll see what he can do in Queens. Speaking of Queens, Julia Albaba, former pro tennis player, great reporter for NBC Sports, doing a fantastic job covering the U.S. Open. Julia, thank you for the time. We will talk again throughout the week about this great tournament. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the tennis. Thank you so much, Jess. We'll see you out here. Yep, you will. Thank <laughs> you.